welcome to another Listener's Home Theater. And today we have Mike Hartigan with us. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Ara. And, hey, how uh, long how long have you been listening to the show for? Oh, probably about two years now. I used to listen to the um, to the other one that went by the way. I can't think of it for the longest time. And I didn't know there was anybody else. And then I searched and searched. It's sort of my guilty pleasure is, is, is uh, listening to you guys. Oh, uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you so much for sharing your home theater with our listeners. So I will just get started. Why don't you flip the micro, the um, camera and we'll just take a look and there we okay. go. So this is probably my fourth home theater I built, uh, well, sort of built. Uh, the house was built and they pre-wired it. It's an open concept room, which is the sort of what we all run into seems like that's the current style of things. And it presents problems for us because where do we put speakers? Where do we put the television? Uh, where do we, uh, uh, how do we fill up a huge volume of space with sound, especially on the, the low end, you know? So, so that's where we're at on, on this one. And, and uh, one of the things I wanted to stress, like uh, we talked about was that you can do this on a budget. I mean, my whole system, this whole system costs less than $1,400. That's the TV and everything. But you got to look for sales and get lucky. And uh, I got real lucky on, on my left center and right speakers. But uh, here we go. Uh, TV over the fireplace, no other place for it. I know that's not ideal. We have it tilted down a little bit so we don't get the off axis looking up a little bit towards it. But uh, uh, it's just a 5-1. I mean, we got... Uh, the rear surrounds are, are uh, uh, ones from Monoprice and they cost 80 bucks each. Um, again, I mentioned my left center rights, which I've got mounted from the ceiling. I don't know if we can see them with this light on. Uh, maybe we can look at the center channel because there's no light on it. Um, but those are Monoprice mounts um, that, that support the speakers. I don't know if we can see yeah, those. Yeah, we can see them perfectly. Yeah. Um, Anyway, and I painted them, uh, put the white uh, uh, grill cloth on them, and uh, they they pretty much disappear, as you can tell, the center one uh, in the ceiling. These are over $1,000 worth of those three speakers, but I got them for $35 total at the garage sale. So I, I scored big time. Oh, what kind of speakers are they? They're NHT, and now hear this. Um, they're, they're a California company that makes speakers. They're, they're decent speakers. Uh, 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 they're not a uh, you know wowie zowie ones, but they're they're good ones for satellites. All right, and you and you found it at a garage sale. That's a theme. Uh, the, the last home theater that we looked at, there was a lot of stuff purchased in a garage sale as well. So that's a place where you can save a lot of money. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So uh, you'll notice that there's you know no wires showing anywhere. That was part of uh, the aesthetic committee uh, com uh, committee uh, recommendations. And then uh, if we go down down below where the cabinet spaces is. This is where the electronics are. And uh, we got an LG uh, Blu-ray player and a, a Yamaha receiver. It's a, it was their most inexpensive one. It was like $320 on sale for 220 bucks. And so you don't need a lot, 100 watts a channel. I don't think you need more than that. Um, it doesn't have Atmos. So my story about Atmos is I went and saw um, Inner, uh, what was that, that movie, the, um, uh, not Intercontinental, Interstellar. And I went to the movie theater expecting to be blown away because I, I bought, ex paid extra for the Atmos theater and it just didn't do anything for me. I didn't get a lot for it. So I, I didn't make sure, I didn't make this theater an Atmos theater. I could have done it, um, I could have put, side surrounds uh, on this wall and on this wall, which would have given me nice side surround and made it a 5.1.2 system with a different receiver. But I decided to leave it the way it is. Um, and it works pretty darn well. The subwoofer, so we had this open area down here and I bought a subwoofer, uh, uh, a Pioneer, uh, Andrew Jones Pioneer uh, subwoofer. And I put it, I got as big as it could be, which is only an eight inch one. And I stuck it in here and it just didn't, didn't do what it needed to do. There wasn't near enough volume. 
uh, not enough low end. And so I took the plate for it, which is here. I took it off of the Andrew Jones speaker and I got a 12 inch speaker from uh, Parts Express and made it, ported it. And this thing just rocks. And <laughs> that's uh, pretty clever. Uh, so yeah. you just put that together. Uh, with, did you yeah. have any designs or you just said, okay, what's the biggest thing I can put in this cabinet? Well, yeah, the biggest thing, but, but, you know, you go do the, the calculations and you take the uh, online, there's a bunch of help, but you take the resonant frequency of your speaker, you do the internal uh, volume of it, and then you can do several things. You can maximize the sound pressure level. You can try to smooth the response, which is what I did because I listen to music on the system too. And uh, that's what I did. It, and, and this thing gets down to 10 hertz and puts out a lot of sound. I'm just incredibly impressed with it. But it's, the, the, the people don't recommend doing this. And the reason is, is that you're building this speaker into the house and all kinds of things can make noise and vibrate that you don't wanna vibrate. One thing that helps in, in this instance is this is a granite uh, seat on top of here. So this, this makes this whole thing really sturdy. Um, this, the shade here on the right, it does a little vibrating and I'm going to probably do something to fix that. But, um, but yeah, I'm really happy about that. And, and that speaker costs 40 bucks, you know, <laughs> <laughs> amazing, which is nothing. So, so, so anyway, did you, did you do the wiring yourself or did uh, somebody come in there well, and take the wires? Pre -wired, so they pre-wired, uh, the speakers and, the TV and it all came down to that same cabinet area that I'm talking about down there. Um, and then we put these IR blasters. I don't know if you can see them yeah. here. And that's so that we can keep the cabinet closed. Um, you know, you, you think that might get too hot, but the electronics haven't had any problems. So, so how uh, does it, on the left side of the room, it's open to, I guess maybe the dining room or something. Yeah. Do you lose yeah. any volume or anything, uh, to yeah, that side so of the house? There's, there's a whole bunch of open space here. I mean, just just a whole bunch of open space. And, and even on this side, you got the, the nook and you know the kitchen. Um, so yeah, no, it, uh, that's why you need the low end to be able to fill the space up with sound. And, and uh, I'm glad that the subwoofer does the job. And having the speaker disconnected from the your center channel disconnected from the tv by a few inches has that caused any issue or can you not even tell that it's well, uh, got what, that kind of diff, uh, it, space what what i think happens is you, mentally your your mind fixes things okay, <laughs> it's nothing's gotcha. ideal and and that's a pro you know i mean it, it'd be ideal if the, the speakers were down lower but i didn't want to hang them down from the ceiling and um you know i could have done a phantom center uh, but it works pretty well. Uh, I, it's not perfect. I mean, I, I love the, the theaters I go to that have the screens with the speakers behind it. Um, yeah. I can really, yeah, that's the best. And I'm noticing you got some hardwoods or at least uh, tiles, hard, uh, hard surfaces anyway, as well as the granite top there. Are there any echoes or anything, uh, or is that the furniture do good to absorb a lot of that? Uh, the, the furniture helps. Um, I, We've got some wall hangings. I'm going to picture this around. These metal things on the wall, these palm leaves, they will shake and buzz. So I, I end up hanging stuff off of them. So okay. that they don't, of course. But in general, it's it's um, I, you know I've played around with the equalization and stuff. I think it's it sounds pretty darn good. Um, I like a little liveness to uh, to the sound. I don't like it really dull. No, uh, that, that's, uh, I, I agree with you. If the room can be too deadened, it does take a little bit of the liveliness out. So I, I get that. And nice setup in an open concept room. We have talked about that on the show recently that a lot of people are wondering what to do in an open concept. I like it. Uh, you do need to have some things pre-wired because as you said, where do you put the speakers? But hanging them from the ceiling the way you did, I think is a really good solution. Any other comments or tips for the uh, viewers? I, I, I would say so. I, just that you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a lot of sound, I don't think. And sound is the most important part, at least for me. So, yeah, I agree. Sound is, uh, I say, more than half of the, of the picture, quote unquote, because the sound will make what you see on the screen come to life that much more. I remember having the VH. This hi-fi uh, uh, hi-fi 
VHS and I hooked up my stereo, my tower speakers to it. It made all the difference. Even with standard definition uh, uh, movies, um, it, it really uh, made a difference. So, Well, Mike, I really appreciate it. And for our viewers watching, if you'd like to share at your home theater, send an email to ara at htguys.com. And we'll try and get your home theater on the, on the I was going to say podcast, but on our YouTube channel. And uh, you can support the show by going to patreon.com slash HDTV podcast. All your support is greatly appreciated. Mike, thank you again. Thank you, Ara. <laughs>